I, I did feel like what we did was of value, but I also felt like it was just the beginning of the work and that that work wasn't done yet. <laughs> channel so I got some requests while we were gone to Peru to do a recap video when we got back and kind of talk about how the trip went talk about more in detail what we did over there and just how the week went or how the almost two weeks really a week and a half went so I thought I would do that today so we are gonna do a Peru recap video First of all, for anybody that would understand this, the trip, the missions trip to Peru really was a missions trip. There was so much opportunity we got to bless others and to serve others. And at the same time, it was such a blessing and it was really serving us. We all kind of went there just wanting to put our heads down and focus and work really hard. And the work was tough. The work was really tough. We we had two main ways that we served while we were there. The girls focused on ministering to the kids at the orphanages. There was two orphanages we visited. One was an all-girls one that had girls all the way up to almost 18. And then the other one was mixed that didn't have quite that old, but maybe had up to 13 or 14, maybe 15, um, and that was mixed, so it was girls and boys. Some of the guys did try to go to the mixed one when they could just because it was a really incredible experience getting to go be with the kids and love on the kids. But the guys also really focused on our other main way we were going there to serve, which was building a house. So there was a family that we had gotten told about before we went and trying to plan what we were gonna do there that they were living in not great conditions. And it was just one of probably a substantial amount of people that were in that situation. But one specifically that we had been told about, that we had facilitated for us the opportunity to go specifically help this family. So we all went on the first day, saw the site. We got to help clean up some things. We got to help the guys start the process. And... And they continued it throughout the week and we kind of just got to visit a couple times and see the progress and then go on the final day and see it all finished how we were leaving it and the main things they did there was they put concrete down for the floor because it was just a dirt mud mess of a floor and they put a roof on because prior to that there was no roof and before we came we had we had sent down money to buy bricks and do a brick wall because that was not there either. And um, then we did a metal roof with like a skylight down the middle. And it was it was really, really cool to see how that went. Um, it The family was incredibly touched. The family was extremely blessed by it. And that was what our goal was, was to bless that family. The kids really, really felt our presence. I think even if they didn't fully understand our whole perspective on things as far as why we had come there, they understood we were there to spend time with them and to try to show them God's love. And I, I really think the most interesting part of the trip for me was kind of making sure that point was understood. Um, and in some circumstances, it was easier than others. Um, the, the little kids that were at the mixed orphanage, that really you kind of just had to just love on them and give them that opportunity to have that attention, to have that care and love and just time of feeling valued. And then the older girls we were actually able to talk about specifically, God loves you. And even though you are in the situation you're in, he has not forgotten about you. He still does care about you. And he hasn't 
abandoned you. No matter if they felt abandoned by other people. And we were all really praying for them to know that and feel that. And that was incredible. That was really amazing. Um, this was my first missions trip. I'd never been on a missions trip before. So I kind of just didn't completely know what to expect. I, I think the biggest thing that wasn't a surprise, but it really, really struck me was how much the devil kind of attacked it. Not really kind of, I guess. It, he attacked it. There was, there was some spiritual attack going on. Um, and physical also. So that is how I kind of knew the whole time God wanted us there. That, that it was a God thing that we had come, that we were doing what he wanted us to do because the devil was trying to attack it. And if you're going to find out anyway, whether you're doing what God wants you to or not, you will find out if the devil starts attacking you once you start doing it. So there, there was some of that. There was some sickness we worked through. There was some injuries we worked through. But none of it stopped us. It was really amazing. All of us just kept going, kept pushing through. We were encouraging each other. It was amazing. We had devotions every morning. Um, besides the morning we went to church. And it was incredible. The traveling, I think, was the most taxing part physically. And the orphanages, for me, was the most taxing part emotionally. This state of the orphanages was really heart-wrenching. It, it was hard knowing that we had to leave the kids in that and not knowing what their care was going to look like when we weren't there and when we left. And that was grating. That's, that's convicting. It was powerful to push us to want to do more, to push me to want to do more and to really, really desire meeting that need because it is so great. I, I did feel like what we did was of value, but I also felt like it was just the beginning of the work and that that work wasn't done yet. So there was, there was a lot of emotional and physical weight and trials and things we worked through and there was also even farther above any of that ways it blessed us overwhelmingly. None of us left the same person we went to Peru. All of us, I think, had some some major convictions and some major realizations while we were there. And I think all of us got at least a little more taste of the importance of taking action and the importance of doing work like that and more of a desire to do that here at home and then even going back to Peru but there was a lot of a lot of reminder from the leadership that look there's this need back home too it doesn't require going to foreign countries to make an impact like this there's major ways of making huge impacts like this in our own community in our own church where there are spots that people could step up and take care of things that are needed to be done and that's hugely needed and hugely important. So the heart for service was definitely grown by about a million and there was just such a realization of how important it was and major conviction for some kind of work like that. I know it made me want to check on orphanages here. <laughs> It made me, although I don't know how easy that would be to do here, to do that same thing with our own orphanages where people probably are not reaching out because the focus is so on other countries. And that was an, another interesting dynamic to it was the reminder that, look, you don't have to go to Peru to do this. And that's even more convicting. <laughs> So um, we, we focused on that, those two ways of serving while we were there. We had a lot of stuff people were working through come up, myself included. Um, the trip kind of just magnified things that were already there and kind of made them hard to ignore. And there was some conviction with stuff like that too. So there was, there was 
growth, there was trials, there was convictions, and God was moving. God was moving very powerfully. And it was incredible to watch just the way people were so excited for us to be there. The way they were so stoked about doing the work with us, encouraged us even more. It was amazing. So I also got specifically asked about a couple things and I wanted to kind of touch on those too. The quickest one is about the llama or the alpaca. I'm not actually sure of the difference. I heard both names the whole time. So the alpaca, <laughs> the missionary family we went there to support and help thought it would be really funny with how much our pastor had talked about alpacas to have one of the people on the street that had alpacas bring one in and they just happened to run into somebody that literally you could hire to have him bring his alpaca to your party, to your house, your gathering, whatever. And it was an alpaca for hire. And he had him dressed up with all the stuff you saw in him and he was so cute and so funny. It was really fun. All of us really enjoyed it. They did that the first day and it was all kind of like, okay, th this is going to be a good trip. I can already tell. So that was just kind of a, our pastor had talked about alpacas so much that they were like, oh, I wonder if we could find one to bring while they're here. And they ended up doing that and they had him come the first day while we were sitting there eating lunch. And oh my gosh, it was so much fun. So yeah, the alpaca was really cool. He was really sweet. I was so nervous he was gonna like spit on me or something. And that's why I was like making funny faces at him like, don't do it, don't do it. But he didn't, he was really sweet. He was really funny. And the kids got to sit on him and everything. So that was a great time. I think all of us will remember that. And <laughs> that was just in response to our pastor talking about alpacas all the time. So that is what that was. <laughs> I already talked about the construction project. Culture differences was another one. Culture differences were very interesting. There's quite a few. So one of the most noticeable ways was the greeting. You generally are greeted with a little kind of kiss on the cheek. It's more just touching cheeks and making a kissing sound. So going, that was very, very common. We did that a lot. There wasn't a lot of shaking hands there. That was how you greeted. The driving is very different. It's a lot less streamlined and organized as far as driving goes. And there was actually more public transportation on the roads than a ton else. There was these little moto taxis that are basically a little three wheel like motorcycle that has a case on it that has seats. Um, there was those and then there was bigger vans that are called combis that we rented too for the whole time but there were public transport ones that you could just get in and they would go to the stop you wanted to go to or whatever. So those were also there and there was a lot of taxis and everything. There was a lot of public transportation. There was a lot of shops, a lot of shops. We weren't able to drink the water. There was just stuff in it that because our bodies aren't used to it, it would have made us sick. And then that kind of fleshed over into what we could order while we were out. Ordering fresh vegetables or salad stuff, there wasn't a ton of even running into that being offered, but same time, that would have been a difference that we didn't want to do. And ice in your drink. We had to think about two. Stuff like that. And the food. The food was amazing. The food was so amazing. But it was fairly different from American food. Um, there was burgers. There was a lot of chicken. But they would do heavy starch and meat we didn't end up having a ton of vegetables, even like grilled vegetables or anything. So there was, in the same meal, you would have rice, potatoes, and chicken. There was quite a bit of that. And then for breakfast, there was very different food too. They had this quinoa gelatin thing 
that sounds really bad, but it was actually not, it didn't taste bad. It was almost sweet. Um, and then they did a lot of bread too. So the food was different, but it was really good. Like it was all the stuff that I love that I, I probably should not have as much of it as I do, but you know, Hey, I was not able to eat paleo there. That just would not have been possible to eat paleo there at all. They did speak Spanish, but it was a more proper Spanish. It was not the same Spanish as in Mexico. It was much more what you learn in a Spanish class, which helped me because that was all I had ever learned and been exposed to. So that was where all of my Spanish knowledge came from. So most of mine worked. Most of mine was pretty well translated over, which was nice. But they are, there are differences in the Spanish, even between Mexico and Peru, and other Spanish-speaking countries can have differences in how they speak it. So, yeah, that was another thing. That's the recap. That was our trip to Peru. God taught me a lot that probably would not fit in this video, but I, God taught me a lot. I learned a lot on this trip and I was very motivated and encouraged by this trip. I think we all went there expecting to serve and we were all very served by this trip. And I personally really want to hold on to what I learned and not let it fade into the memories of the trip. And I really I hope to take all of that with me as we go. So. I had an amazing time. So did Andrew. We both really loved it. The injuries that I got on the trip were my finger. I sprained it. There was a hole in the sports complex that we went to's grass that was like the grass around the hole had overgrown and covered it. So I didn't see it. I stepped into it and I fell forward when I did and bent my pinky finger back. And I didn't at first think it was that bad and then it started really, really, really hurting. I also got a very bad sunburn. We were at 9,000 feet elevation in Cajamarca. 9,000 feet. The sun was so much more intense because of how much closer we were than we were used to. It was insane. Like the locals there were all fine. They were used to it. It was their normal. But you know, you bring a white girl from California sea level to that elevation and Oh boy, that was intense. So I did get a sunburn, as if you watched those vlogs, you saw. And the thing was, it wasn't super painful. It looked really bad, and it was really bad, but it wasn't painful, really. It really did not hurt as bad as it looked like it should have. Um, but I, my skin was very red. It was very raw. It started peeling then, and I got really swollen here, like super super swollen here I didn't even look like myself I was so swollen right here and now it's all fine it's peeling a little bit more but it's basically gone and good and healed and everything and none of it ever stopped me nothing none of what happened as far as my finger or sunburn or anything ever stopped us from doing the work we went to do it it never deterred us anything that anybody had happened. So it was incredible. That added an interesting dynamic to the trip. That was our trip. I really want to travel more and I would love to go on more missions trips and I will be really excited if we get to go back at some point. I hope you liked this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up and share it with everybody. If you have any other questions about the trip or you want to see any other videos about the trip, let me know in the comments below and I will do my best to do that and answer those questions. If you are not already subscribed, click the screen and subscribe and I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye!